statement. Please raise your hands for questions, Coach. Yeah, I mean, just first of all, man, I want to thank the, the fans, the students that showed up out here today. We did. They knew it was going to be hot, and it was hot. Uh, but we had a, a sellout, man. It was an awesome atmosphere, blackout. Uh, really appreciate those guys and everybody coming out and, and you know celebrating with our team today with, with this great victory and it's our first Big 12 win. So uh, I want to give them, make sure I recognize them. You know, we can't do it without them. And, and obviously, one of our goals this year is to defend the NIP, and, and, and we want to make this a great home field event. And it is. It's incredible what it was today. So I want to thank them. Um, you know, also want to, you know, it, it was, all three phases today I thought played outstanding. Um, it was a complete game um, out of all three. Um, you know, set the tone right off the bat. I thought, you know, with Minkins, you know, coming back and, and, and playing this week and getting an interception on the first drive, man, that kind of set the tone. And offensively, we, we go down and score. Um, and then it was pretty much on after that. You know, I mean, as you think about it, I mean, it was um, just a complete game defensively. We gave up the one post route. Um, and that's the one time they got in the red zone, but our defense did a great job of, of not letting them get a first down and they attempted a field goal, did not make it. Um, and then our offense put together some, some nice drives. I mean, they got a really good defense. I, I think their defense is very efficient in what they do. They're, they're hard to run the ball against. Um, they play a lot of man coverage back there. And it was two great throws by Soresby um, to Xavier in the end zone to get those touchdowns, to get some points on the board. We popped a long run with Corey there, probably 50-some yard run, which was outstanding. Um, but it, it was it was hard to get yards on the ground today, and um, you know give him a lot of credit for that. But I do think we were very efficient throwing the football today. Um, and the other thing that we did was take care of the ball. We did not have any turnovers, and we, and we created three. That was huge in the game. Um, and I think two of their turnovers for sure went got touchdowns. I don't know about the third, but um, but anyway, just a complete game. And uh, you know special teams today were solid as well. You know we knocked down two more field goals. Um, Fletch averaged 43 yards on two punts. Uh, Hawks is punting the ball out of the back of the end zone. I mean. You know, so it was uh, it was a complete game today. Really proud of our guys, and um, you know they deserve to have the rest of the day off. As a former quarterback, how fun is it to watch when Sorsby gets in a groove like that, where it seems like everything he sees is working? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was. Yeah, I thought we had a solid game plan coming in, and and we knew there would be some tight windows. Um, you know, his, his one incompletion early. I mean, Royer had it. The guy did a great job of knocking it out. That would have you know, basically would start a twelve for twelve. I think starting the game. Um, it's at 11 to 12, but um, you know I, he was in a good rhythm there. We had some good efficient throws. Um, Starling made a great catch on the on the one down the field there. Royer made some good contested catches. You know it wasn't like they were a wide open. I mean we're, we're, our guys were kind of make some good contested catches there, and, and I thought you know they did a great job with that. And, and Rory, you know played a solid game. That's two games that you've done a, a decent number on Donovan Smith, a, a, a big fella, but uh, he's out of the game in the, in the third quarter. You know, yeah, I mean, he's obviously a big pl uh, person that can run the football. I mean, that was the one thing we were worried about was him, you know, carrying the ball from the quarterback position. And then when the, the other quarterback comes in, he can run too, you know. So basically both of those guys, and they, they got a few first downs on us by running it third and medium, and they're running the queue. And, you know, but we felt like, okay, if we give that up, you know, that's not going to beat us, you know, as long as we get them down. And so, you know, they hit a few first downs on us on that. But, but overall, man, we, we contained the quarterback very well. Um, you know, really didn't have too many open windows to throw. As I mentioned, they had the one post ball. You know, we lacked our guy. Should have been back in the post. But they get back there, so we hit that one. But other than that, I mean, that was pretty much it in the throw game. Marshall, you talked about how this was solid performance yep. from all three phases of the game, giving credit to Houston. Just how close was this to a perfect all-around win for Cincinnati? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Thirty-four to nothing. I don't know how you know it gets much better than that. Really, um, you know. It's hard to lose if you don't let anybody score. So <laughs> zero points is pretty good, man. Um, you know, some people have been critical of our defense the last couple of weeks, um, but to hold it, uh, you know, a power four team to zero points, uh, I don't think it's been done this year yet. You know, so that's pretty good. Being able to get that first Big 12 home win in your tenure at the school in general, just how important is that? Oh, that that's huge. Win? It's huge. It's huge. I mean, we've, you know, Cincinnati's fought so hard, to, you know, to get to this level, you know, and. and uh, you know, to finally come out here and get our first Big 12 win and, the, and our first opportunity this season. I mean, it's been big for us, you know, to get the bell back last week. Now, you know, you're getting this Big 12 win. I mean, it's been a great couple of weeks here. You know, we, we tell the team, you know, these are these are one-week seasons that we have. You know, every, everything can change next week, everything. So you, we have to be so intentional and so focused on every single day. And, and that's why, you know, somebody asked me about a 12 o'clock kick, you know. I, I, number one, I don't set what time we play, all right? So whatever the time they tell us to play, that's the time we play. But I like 12, 
because from this point forward, I can go watch some college football. I don't care what happens. <laughs> this is the only day of the week we can relax. This is it right now. From right now, because when we come into office tomorrow, this is all Texas Tech. So, um, so now I'm happy, man. So I get I get another six hours here to go watch some ball and hang out and, and celebrate this win. Keegan, the track. Sterling Burkhalter was someone that was challenged in the fall, and he's put yeah. together a few good games. Yeah. How does that speak to just the overall depth in the receiver room for the circuit room? Yeah, I mean, Sterling, man, he had a great he, – he's one of the more improved players, I thought, in the spring. And then he, he followed up in camp. You know, he's backing up Xavier. And Xavier, man, has had a great season so far. And, you know, but he can't play every snap, you know, so we rotate him to keep him fresh so we can play, you know, second and fourth quarters. And Sterling's come in every – you know, I feel like he's come in and made some great plays for us. Um, you know, he had a play early in the drive there. And, you know, we got about eight, six, seven, eight yards. And then the post route was awesome, you know, contested going up and getting it. So – I really feel like he's gaining confidence as he's moving throughout the season. Um, you know, I think he, you know he'll continue to get better and better. I mean, he's a good target. He's got good hands, um, and he's and, you know the guy from right here in Cincinnati. He's done a great job for us. Neil, coach, third straight game with the turnover there on the opening drive. What does that really say about what Tyson Bay is doing there with the defense? Yeah, I mean, I think you know. Let's hope that trend continues. You know, you know, I feel like all three of those throws are about the same. Really, I mean, they kind of. You know, hang up over the middle, and our safeties are working over the top and, and, and making those picks. And I think, you know, the quarterbacks maybe see the guy open initially, but they don't see the backside safety that's coming over. And that's kind of what all those picks have been. Um, you know, two of them by Minkins, and that's why I said this earlier. It was great to have Minkins back this week um, after missing a week. And so, you know, he's a he's a ball hawk in the back end. He's got a good feel and, and understanding of what we're trying to do. Um, you know, so. So yeah, I mean, obviously, anytime you can get a turnover, it's going to help your team win. I was glad today we converted that to seven points. How would you compare the defensive line, Eric Phillips, Cam Wilson's ability to set the edge these past two weeks compared to the first two weeks? Yeah, I mean, and, I, mean I think we're still learning about the defense. We're still learning, growing with it. Um, you know, it's the fourth game now that we've been into this. You know, we've played some, some teams that have exposed us at times, but I think the guys are getting more and more comfortable. Um, it's not going to get any easier as we play in the Big 12. I mean, there's some outstanding offenses and outstanding quarterbacks in this league. Um, you know, Texas Tech, I don't know, They've been putting up a million yards, I feel like, every week, you know, over 500 yards and scoring a ton of points. I mean, we'll be challenged in that. And, and as you go looking throughout the rest of the season, there's some great offenses. So we're going to continue to have to get better with what we're doing. We've got to figure out what other ways to get into the backfield and get on the quarterback. Um, these quarterbacks are so talented. And so, um, you know, but for the second two weeks in a row, I thought, you know, we did, we handled it in the offense. We kept them out of the end zone. I think that's ultimately the key. It's not really the yards. It's more about keeping them out of the end zone. Um, Chad, and then track. How important is the progression that your defense is making on third down? It just feels like last year, that was really where it kind of, you would get oh, stops yeah. on first and second and back right on third. Yeah. Four of 14 today, I think. Yeah, um, yeah that's huge. It's huge because it keeps the drives moving, you know, and, and, you know, getting them off the field is, man, we, we talk about it, stress it out all the time about, you know, getting getting off the field on third down. And and you have to mix it up, as I, as I said earlier. I mean, they, these, these offenses are so good and talented these, these days, these quarterbacks. You know, you have to mix it up. You can't just do the same thing every time. They'll exploit you. So trying to do some different things and, you know, whatever our guys can handle, and we'll continue to hopefully do that as we, as we move forward. Last week against Miami, Scott, and today against Houston, the attitude, the, the way you guys have uh, played with the lead, what have you seen since the fifth game? Uh, I guess since the fifth game. Yeah. And how has that changed? Well, I mean, I think we got some really good leadership in the locker room. These, these guys, we got some mature guys, older guys that – have scarred down a lot. Um, some of these guys from last year, this year, you know, and, um, you know, a little bit. We got complacent in the fourth quarter there, the pit game, and we never got grabbed the momentum back, you know. And I think that's the one thing they've talked about in the last two weeks in the locker room is keep the pedal down, keep playing hard, play one tank, one one play at a time, and and continue to do your job. And I think you can't think about man, let's get to the fourth quarter. Or let's, you know, you have to stay in the moment. And I think our guys have done a really good job with that the last two weeks. You played a ton of guys in the opener. What, what's it mean in a Big 12 game yeah. in the fourth quarter before you're able to put guys in and get them Big 12? Right? It's awesome. It's awesome. You know, as we you know, we said, said this in the press conference earlier the week, you know, we've played a lot of freshmen this year, being able to rotate them in. And I feel like some of those guys now are become experienced players. You know, you think about four weeks they've played. I mean, they're playing 20, 25 snaps, you know. And over that time, you accumulate some good experience. You accumulate um, some confidence to know that I can go out here and play. And, um, we've been able to see that, particularly on defense, which has been awesome because these teams, you know, it's best like that. It's hot today, so to be able to rotate and not get get wore down, and for those second and fourth quarter uh, parts of the game. Alex and JT. 
you win at Miami and get the victory belt back. Now you win your first Big 12 game. Can you guys feel the momentum that you're generating right now as September, the end of September approaches? Yeah, I mean, I, I think, um, you know, we've said this really the all season of how connected we, we wanted to be. And we felt like we were a connected football team with, with some really good leadership. Um, you know, we play one bad quarter, you know, and you're sitting there and you really, that hurts, you know, that, that, that game um, in that fourth quarter. But other than that, I mean, our guys have played great football. They've played together. They've played for each other. They've, they've picked each other up. I mean, and that's what connected teams do. And, and, and it's fun to see. But, and I told our team, it starts throughout the week. I mean, our guys, this team has been really, really good at focusing on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays practice. And I think that's the key, how, how we prepare. The defense. Looked a lot more aggressive today. Um, against Miami, you guys gave up over 350 yards in the secondary in the passing game. But to what you did to Houston, it looked like a totally different team, and especially on the back end. What was, what was that team? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, this team, I don't think uh, Houston doesn't throw the ball as good as Miami. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that quarterback of Miami's been, you know, he played for six years, I think, or something. I mean, he's been playing forever, and he can throw the football. He had some good receivers. And so, um, a little bit different offense when you think about that. They, they were not as efficient throwing the football, even coming in. So, but having said that, our guys still went out and played well. They gave up the one big play. Other than that, they played outstanding all day. You're playing at Texas Tech next week. Mm -hmm. It's the first game outside of the state of Ohio, really the Cincinnati area. How will you guys approach that? Do you approach anything differently than what you have the first four weeks? No, I mean, it's still all about your preparation um, and how you handle your business throughout the whole week. Now, the difference, obviously, is we're getting on a plane, we're flying, you know, all the way to Texas. Um, we don't, we'll find out tomorrow, I guess, the time of the game. Um, so we don't even know what time we play. I've never played there. I've heard it's a you know, great environment there. It's loud, it's, they get into it. Um, so, you know, hostile environment, long ways away from home. Um, and so, you know, hopefully our guys will continue to stay connected. Because when you go out there, man, you feel like, all right, we gotta go, we got something to prove when we go out here and play a little more. Final question, Aiden. Uh, so you Henderson, two touchdowns today, obviously three in the year was tied last year. Can you speak more to his growth from this year, mm -hmm. from last season? Yeah, I mean, I, I just think he's, you know, continues to work. He's, he's one of the harder workers we have in practice, and he gets after it every day. Um, you know, I think, and Sorsby, you know, feels comfortable with him, throwing him up. You know, we really didn't throw many fade balls to him last year. We threw two today and, and got two touchdowns. That, that's a, a great aspect of growth, I think, for him to be able to get some confidence in the red zone and go get, you know, throw it up and get some touchdowns. Um, you know, I think he'll continue to, to have, you know, a good season because he's going to get his opportunities. Um, but, uh, you know, I just like where, he, I like where his mind's at because I already works. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.